with the flagpole there is a favourite of mine because of all that carving of the woodwork. You don't usually get that on a Tudor building. Uh, it's usually just flat fronting. But this one is specially done, so a lot of extra effort, a lot of extra money was put into that. How we managed to rebuild our town after those big fires is that we got a special crown patent to go around to other counties to raise money uh, to build the town up. And the people who went to get this money was the bailiff of the town and uh, aldermen like Richard Quiney, they went and uh, gathered uh, the money together. And strange enough, sheer coincidence, the houses that were built first uh, were the houses of the bailiff and the aldermen. And uh, this is the bailiff, Thomas Rogers, who was a butcher. He, of course, sold his meat at the shambles. He didn't sell it here, this is where he lived. And if, you're, if you've got very good eyesight, uh, if you look at the window on what we call the first floor, Americans call the second floor, uh, but the uh, beam underneath that horizontal beam, if you come this way, the last cross has TR carved into the woodwork. That stands for Thomas Rogers. His wife is the initials AR, the same place at the other end of the beam. They had a daughter called uh, Catherine, and she married a man, uh, another butcher in fact, who became a publican later, but started off as a butcher, called Robert Harvey. Their son John was the man who went to the New World as a Puritan with, uh, with some money and, and a, a pile of books and set up a small little educational establishment in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He died in a year of getting there, but it's his, his set up. Harvard University uh, were given that house in, uh, that's Harvard House, they were given that house in 1906. They look after it very well indeed. Next door is the Garrick Inn, named after the great George actor David Garrick. More than anybody else, David Garrick was the man who put Shakespeare on a pedestal. Before David Garrick, we were doing bastardised versions of, uh, of Shakespeare, singing and dancing, witches and Macbeth, that sort of thing, you know, happy ending, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but in fact, uh, Garrick went back to the original text. Sometimes he put his own sort of little speech in. In fact, Macbeth is a classic example. Uh, whereas, as you know, Macbeth dies in the wings, Macduff kills him in the wings. Well, Garrick wasn't having that, so he dies on stage and writes himself a little dying speech. He says, I am gone, this is over. It's terrible stuff. But they, that's, that's Garrick for you. He rarely did that. He used, used, just used to use the Shakespeare script. And suddenly everybody realised that he, Shakespeare was a bit better than anybody else, and that he'd been on that pedestal ever since. So, and of course, Garrick made himself a star playing Shakespeare, so he did all right. Himself. And when was that? Uh, that was in uh, uh, 1769. Was the that was late into Garrick's career really. But 1769, he was already a star doing Shakespeare. That was the time where we had a jubilee here, fronted by Garrick in Stratford, because the council decided that of course what we need is for people to come to Stratford. Nobody came to Stratford 200 years after Shakespeare's birth, so we're going to put that right. And they got David Garrick to front it. Unfortunately, nobody had told him that uh, the River Avon here floods on a regular basis uh, every 50 or so years. Sadly, we've had two in the last dozen years, which is slightly worrying, but uh, we've had some massive floods here since I've been around, which is seriously worrying. But historically, it's been, uh, on average, twice, twice a century. And, uh, and this, he just happened to build himself a, a wonderful sort of uh, uh, place for a banqueting hall, and down by the river which was a bit unfortunate because the river flooded and it was a complete washout. And he put a lot of his money into it, Garrick, and he wasn't going to lose it. So he put the whole Garrick, the Jubilee, on again in London. And it was a huge success. And suddenly people say, we've got to come to Stratford. Patron saint of the tourist industry, David Garrick. He set the ball rolling. Everybody started coming to Stratford thanks to David Garrick's Jubilee in London, uh, which is all about Stratford and Shakespeare. And in fact, he left his mark on the town here, this uh, town hall here didn't exist in Shakespeare's day, this is all the corn market here, uh, but the town hall was built just two years before the Jubilee, uh, and uh, uh, 1767, and uh, they left a plinth on the north wall there, thinking that we will find a statue somewhere of Shakespeare put on that north wall, knowing perfectly well that in his garden, David Garrick had a replica of the one in Westminster Abbey. And they told Garrick they were looking for a statue, couldn't find one anyway. He said, well, oh, I've got one in my garden. I wonder if it'll fit. Fitted perfectly. Oh, strange. Yeah. There you go. So Garrick donated that to us, which he wishes to. Uh, the corn market anyway, we're, there, there's no house here at the moment, but there used to be a house in Shakespeare's day. It was lived in by the baker here, Hamlet Sadler. He and his wife, Judy, were the godparents of Shakespeare's twins. That's oh. why they're called Hamlet and Judy. And in fact, they had a son themselves, and Shakespeare's the godfather, they called him William. So uh, we could... We can trace, it's a difficult job, very difficult, but if you're 
good at research, then this is what you could do. You could trace the relationships between people through their godparents, which is interesting because it's uh, similar trades and all that sort of thing. It's very it's, it's intricate, but it's well worth doing. We could we could do with that research, no doubt about that at all. Uh, but uh, yeah, they and uh, Hamlet Sadler was a great friend of his all his life. In fact, it's, it's mentioned in Shakespeare's will as well. He's a beneficiary of the will, so uh, he sticks around. Uh,